WooCommerce is a free e-commerce plugin that seamlessly integrates with your WordPress website so that you can start listing and selling your products directly through your website. In terms of all the e-commerce websites on the internet, over 12% use WooCommerce to power their online stores. If you're a beginner that's completely new to e-commerce and you're looking to learn how to set up and use WooCommerce to sell your products online, then this video tutorial is for you. Hey guys, Stuart here, welcome back to this channel and if it's your first time here, thanks for joining me. Now in this updated WooCommerce tutorial for beginners, I'm excited to help you learn, understand, set up and use this free e-commerce plugin called WooCommerce so you can start selling your products on your WordPress website. Okay, so before I get you up and running with WooCommerce, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and launch into WordPress and show you how to use WooCommerce to set up your online store. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is log into the back end of our WordPress website. And that's going to take you here. Now, it's important to note that there are a few things that you need to do before you can start using WooCommerce. The first is you need website hosting, you need a reliable web hosting provider, then you also need a domain. Then you need to install WordPress as the CMS content management system that you're going to use to build your website. And following those three steps, we can then go ahead and install WooCommerce, the free e-commerce plugin, and start adding products to our WordPress website. Now, if you're a beginner and you're completely new to WordPress and you currently don't have a web hosting provider, you do not have a domain name, and you do not have a WordPress website, then I suggest you watch our beginner's tutorial to help you create a WordPress website. So what I'll do is link that up above and down below in the description that will take you through the process of how you can create your own website from scratch using WordPress. This tutorial will help you sign up to our recommended web hosting provider and also how to choose a domain name as well as building a premium WordPress website and then launching your website online. However, if you already have a WordPress website, then we can go ahead and dive into this WooCommerce tutorial. Okay, so once you've logged into your WordPress dashboard, simply navigate over to plugins over on the left hand side and then locate add new and click here. Then navigate over to the right hand side and locate search plugins. Click here and simply type in WooCommerce. And then come down and locate the free plugin WooCommerce. As you can see this plugin has over 5 million active installations with high reviews. Now it's best practice before you install any plugin onto your WordPress website that you back up your WordPress website just in case you have clashes between themes, plugins or your WordPress version. And this can sometimes break your site. Now, if you're not too sure how to back up your WordPress website, what I'll do is link a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description that will guide you through the process of how to safely back up your WordPress website, just in case your website goes down when you install any plugin. And taking a backup is not required to install this plugin. It is just best practice. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click install now to install the WooCommerce plugin onto our WordPress website so we can start adding products and selling products on our website. Give WordPress a moment to install the plugin and then click activate. And that's going to take you to the WooCommerce installation wizard. This is where we need to fill out information about our store. So go ahead and fill out this information. I'm going to quickly do this now. And then once you've completed your store address and information, come down and click continue. Then we want to get improved features and faster fixes by sharing non-sensitive data to WooCommerce. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes, count me in. Then here, what you want to do is simply go ahead and select the industry that you operate in. For the purpose of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is simply click the first option and then come down and click continue. 
Now, although WooCommerce is a free plugin, you also have the option to upgrade to a premium plan in order to access subscriptions, memberships, bookings, bundles, and customizable products. And you can see the price list for the type of products that you want to sell. However, for the purpose of today's tutorial, what we're gonna do is cover the free features within WooCommerce, and what we wanna do is list physical products. And you also have the option to sell downloads. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just gonna sell physical products on our online store. Go ahead and select how many products you plan to display on your website. I'm going to select one to 10. And if you're currently selling elsewhere, you can select here and select the option that applies to you. We're gonna go ahead and select no. And we can always come back and change any of this information when we like. So I'm going to come down and click continue. And here you'll have the option to add recommended business features to my site. If we click this drop down, these are recommended business plugins that WooCommerce is going to ask if you want to install these onto your WordPress website. So remember, plugins are basically features that you're adding to your website. And you can always add these plugins later on if you like. So what we're gonna do is unselect this option because I don't wanna use any of these additional features just yet. And remember, you can always install these plugins later on down the track. So go ahead and click continue. Or if you like, you can select all these plugins before clicking continue. And then here WooCommerce is going to ask if you want to install a theme for your online store. And a theme basically determines the layout, the look and the feel of your online store. So what you can do is navigate up to the top and select free themes. And then simply navigate down and view each of these themes by clicking live demo. And then if you like the look of that particular theme, the way that your website's going to look, then you can select choose. Now you can always change your theme at any point if you like. So go ahead and choose a theme that you like the look of. Now for the purpose of today's WooCommerce tutorial for beginners, we're gonna use the Divi theme. Now this is a premium theme that we always recommend to our clients and our audience because it's an extremely easy theme to use. It allows you to simply use templates as well as a drag and drop visual builder to build out your website pages. If you wanna learn more about our favorite theme, what I'll do is link a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description that will show you how to use the Divi theme to actually create your website. And remember the full website creation tutorial that we mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, we actually use the Divi theme to create the website in that tutorial. Okay, so with that quick note, go ahead and choose a free theme. We're gonna come down and choose our current Divi theme. And then once you've selected a theme, you'll be directed back to your WordPress dashboard. Now over on the left hand side under WooCommerce, what we want to do is come down and click on settings. And this is where we want to take the time to set up our online store. So the first thing we want to do is make sure you have general selected, then navigate down here and make sure that your store address, your information is correct. So I'm happy with my store address information here. Then what I wanna do is navigate down to general options. Here you can select all the locations that you're selling to. You can also select your shipping locations. And then we have the default customer location. So we're gonna keep these default settings as they are because this business is going to sell products internationally. Then you can go ahead and enable taxes. And as you can see, your tax rates will be configurable and taxes will be calculated during checkout. Then if we scroll down to enable coupons, we have the option to enable the use of coupon codes on our website for let's say when a customer has a discount code. We're gonna keep that enabled. Then what we wanna do is navigate down to currency options. Now what you'll notice with most of the settings, you can leave them as default. And again, you can change any of these settings later on if you feel that the configuration of your online store is slightly wrong. And down here, I'm happy with my currency options. You can go ahead and select the currency that you want to sell in. This is the currency that your customers will see. Then once you're happy with all your changes under general, come down and click save changes. Next, what we wanna do is navigate up to products. And below products, the first thing that we wanna do is make sure that our shop page 
has shop selected. Then below this we have add to cart behavior. Now basically this means if a potential customer wants to add a product to the cart, as soon as they add that product, they will be redirected to the cart page or they will remain on the page and they will just have a view cart button next to where they added that product to the cart. So this is completely up to you. We're gonna select redirect to the cart page after successful addition. And then down next to placeholder image, we're gonna keep this as default because this isn't going to be an issue for us because each of our products are going to have an image, at least one image. Then come down to measurements, make sure the weight unit and the dimensions unit is correct. We're gonna keep kg and centimeters selected. However, if you're from the US, maybe you wanna select pounds or any of these other options. Then if we navigate down to reviews, we have the option to enable reviews for our products. Enable product reviews, we're gonna keep that turned on. Show verified owner, label on customer reviews. Again, we're gonna keep this all as default. Then we have product ratings, enable star ratings on reviews. This will basically show a visual star review rating for each product. And that's gonna drive social proof if we have high ratings. And then we have the option to select star ratings should be required or optional. Again, for now, we're gonna keep the default settings as they are. You can always come back and change this later on. Come down and click save changes when you're happy with all your changes. Then navigate up to shipping next to products. And then down here next to shipping zones, we have the option to add shipping zones. Everyone's account is going to be slightly different depending on the nature of your customers, where you send your products to. So a shipping zone is a geographical region where a certain set of shipping methods and rates apply. So for example, what we're gonna do is click add shipping zone. I'm going to add my shipping zone based on countries. So the first one is going to be New Zealand, which is where our business is based. Then I'm gonna come down to zone regions and find New Zealand, and I'm going to select all of New Zealand. Then come down and click add shipping method. Then go ahead and select a shipping method. At the moment we have a flat rate selected. If we click here, we can choose from free shipping or local pickup. We're gonna keep flat rate selected for New Zealand and come down and click add shipping method. And then under flat rate, what I'm gonna do is select edit, and I can choose if the shipping method is taxable. I'm gonna click none. And the flat rate for shipping within New Zealand is going to be $10. And I'm happy with my flat rate cost for New Zealand. So I'm going to come down and click save changes. So that is an example of how you can add shipping zones and shipping methods. What I can do is navigate over to add shipping method to add an additional shipping method. And that's an example of how you can add shipping zones for each of your different zones, as well as how to add shipping methods for each of your different zones. I could also navigate back to shipping zones. And because I sell my products internationally, what I would do is add additional shipping zones for each of the different countries or regions that I ship to. So as you can see, you wanna take the time to add your shipping zones and shipping methods. There is also a fantastic plugin called WooCommerce Shipping that can also be a shipping solution for your online store. However, we're not gonna cover this plugin in today's tutorial. Then what you wanna do once you've added your shipping methods, your shipping zones, go ahead and select payments. Now, depending on the nature of your online store, you can go ahead and enable cash on delivery, check payments, or direct bank transfer. However, the most streamlined method is to install the plugin WooCommerce Payments. This is an additional plugin that allows you to simply accept credit cards, debit cards, and other popular payment methods. This makes it easy for your customers to purchase your products without having any issues with their payments. So go ahead and click Install. And once this free plugin has been installed, you're gonna be taken to the WooCommerce Payments plugin, where all you need to do is then go ahead and complete the initial setup. It only takes a few steps before you can start getting paid with WooCommerce Payments. So go ahead and take the time to finish the setup. 
We're gonna leave this for now because all you need to do is add your personal information. So once you've completed your WooCommerce payments and now you can start being paid, what we wanna do is navigate back over to WooCommerce and come down to settings. Then next to payments, which we've just completed, click on accounts and privacy. What we're gonna do is allow customers to place orders without an account, as well as allow customers to log into an existing account during checkout if they've purchased from us in the past. Then under account creation, what we're gonna do is leave these two options selected. When creating an account, automatically generate an account username for the customer based on their name, surname, or email. And we also wanna keep this option selected. When creating an account, send the new user a link to their password. This makes it extremely easy for our customers to create an account. Then what we're gonna do is navigate down the page and under privacy policy, what you wanna do is make sure that you create or add your own information in regards to the registration privacy policy and the checkout privacy policy. You can also keep these as default for now and you can always edit these later on. Then navigate down to personal data retention. And again, we're gonna leave this as default and then come down and click save changes when you're happy with all your changes. Then once you've saved changes, simply navigate up to emails. This is where we can manage our email notifications. For example, if we come down under email, we have new order, canceled order, failed order. Now these are email notifications that will be sent to our store manager, which is myself. We can also navigate over to manage and we can customize the message that is associated with that email notification as well as the recipients of that email notification. Then if we navigate over to failed order, you can see these other email notifications that are sent to the customer. For example, when an order has been completed, there will be a message, an email notification that is sent to the customer's email. If we click on manage, we can go ahead and customize the email notification, the message that that customer will see when an order has been completed. However, what we're gonna do is leave all our email notifications as they are for now. You can spend a lot of time customizing the content if you like. Again, once you've made any changes, simply come down and click Save Changes. What we're gonna do is navigate over to Integration next to Emails. And this is only important if you use MaxMind Geolocation. We're gonna skip this for now and navigate over to Advanced. And then under Page Setup, what we wanna do is keep most of this information as default, but under Terms and Conditions, what we wanna do is make sure that we select our Terms and Conditions page. If you haven't already created one, what you wanna do is take the time to create a Terms and Conditions. This is information like your guarantee, your policies in terms of refund policies, and other information that is important for your customers to view. And last, under settings, what we wanna do is navigate over to multi-currency. And this is where once you've finished setting up WooCommerce Payments, which is the plugin that we installed to streamline the payments for our customers, then you can go ahead and add multiple currencies to your site. We're gonna leave that for now and then navigate over to the left hand side. And now that we've completed our settings, what we wanna do is go ahead and add our first product by navigating over to products and then add new. Okay, so to add your first product, what you wanna do is navigate up to product name and add the name of your product. For the purpose of our tutorial, we're just gonna go ahead and add an example product called vertical bar necklace. Then simply come down to the product description down here and add your product description. I'm going to paste in my product description that I created earlier. And as you can see, I've added my product description. Now what you wanna do is make sure that you use some of the formatting options up here. For example, you can see over here, I've bolded this bit of text up here and I've also added bullet points down here. You can also go ahead and insert an image if you like. Then once you've added your product description, simply scroll down and add a regular price and a sale price if you like. This will show to your customer that your product is discounted. I'm going to go ahead and quickly add a price. And then once you've added your product price, navigate over to inventory. 
Under inventory, you can go ahead and add your stock keeping unit. You can also add the status of your stock in stock or out of stock or on back order. You can also navigate over to shipping and you can add your product weight and dimensions. Then if we navigate down to linked products, this is where you can add a product to upsell or cross sell. And these are strategies that you can use to drive more sales and ultimately drive more profit. Then what you want to do is navigate over to product categories and add a product category. We're going to call this necklaces. Then click add new to add that category. And then go ahead and choose the category that you want this product to be part of. I'm happy with necklaces. I have that selected already. Then navigate down to product tags. You can go ahead and add product tags. And then below that we have product image. This is the primary image for this product. Go ahead and click set product image and then simply upload your primary image for that product. Here's the primary image that I want to use for this product. Then go ahead and add the product title here, as well as adding the product title in the alt text. And this is going to help with SEO, search engine optimization, helping people find your product online. Then come down and click set product image. Then scroll down further and add product gallery images if you have multiple images that you want to add for this product. I'm going to go ahead and add multiple images quickly. So as you can see, I've quickly gone ahead and just added one other product, but I suggest adding at least three to four product gallery images for the one product. Then what you can do under product short description is just add a short description of your product. And there we go, I'm happy with my first product. Now, when you're ready to go live, simply navigate over to publish on the right hand side, or you can save this product as a draft before you make it live. And you can also go ahead and preview what your product will look like. I'm going to go ahead and click publish. And then up here, you can see that our product has been published. So what I'm going to do is actually view my website and then view my product. So to do that, navigate up to the top left hand corner, come down and click visit site. Now, as you can see, because this is an example website, this is a website for a digital media marketing agency, not an online store that sells jewelry. But bear with me, this is just an example. Now, if we navigate up to the menu, I cannot see a shop item up here. So what we need to do is go ahead and add the shop page onto our menu by navigating over to our dashboard again. Then simply navigate down the left hand side until you find appearances and then come down and click on menus. And under pages, what we want to do is find the shop page. So here's the shop page. I'm going to click here and then click add to menu. And as you can see, that's going to add the shop page to our menu. And I can simply drag this menu item where I want it to appear on my menu. For example, if I want it right under home, then all I would do is drag and drop and place the shop page next to our home page. Then come down and click save menu. Now what we want to do is navigate back to our website by navigating up to the top left hand corner and clicking on visit site. And next to home, you can see our shopping page. If we click here, and as you can see, that's going to take us to our default shop. Now, if I click on our product, that's going to take us to our product page over here. And this is where our customers can add this product to their cart and then purchase this product. So what we're going to do is navigate back to our dashboard and then locate settings on the left hand side and navigate down to reading. Now under your home page display, you want to make sure that you have a static page selected here and then come down to home page. This is where you have the option to select the page that you want to be your home page. So for example, what I could do is click shop and that would make my shop my home page. However, this just depends if your online store is purely an online shop or if your online shop is just an addition to your website. So for now, we're going to keep home selected, but if you just run an online store, then maybe you want to make the shopping page your homepage on your website. 
And again, once you've made any changes, navigate down to save changes. Also, what we want to do is navigate down below settings and then select permalinks. And then under permalinks, what we want to do is make sure that post name is selected. And for example, what that's going to do to the URL is add the product name in here, which is going to be a lot cleaner when people view the product URL. And once you've done that, simply scroll down to the bottom and click save changes. And then what we can do is navigate back to our online store by navigating up to the top left hand corner. We can come down and view our site, which will take us to the home page of our website. Or we can come down and click visit store, which will take us straight to our online store. Now, as you can see, our shop page has a default standard style. There has been no customizations. Now, in order to customize the look, the feel, the style of your shop, simply navigate over to your WordPress dashboard, then come down to pages and then navigate down to shop. And this is where you can customize your website pages using the default WordPress editor. Or if you're using a premium theme like the Divi theme, you can use a visual drag and drop builder to build out your website pages to make them look a lot more attractive. Now in this tutorial, we're not going to dive into the design side of actually designing and creating a stunning shop. We've just showed you all the essentials to setting up and listing your products online. However, what I will do in the future is share a beginner's tutorial that will take you through the process of customizing your WooCommerce shop with the Divi Builder so that you can make it attractive and stunning. So what I'll do is link that tutorial down below in the description. However, that is everything we wanted to cover in this WooCommerce tutorial for beginners, helping you learn, understand, set up and use WooCommerce to start selling your products through your WordPress website. And there we have it guys, that is it for this complete WooCommerce tutorial for beginners. Now if you have any questions about WooCommerce make sure to pop those down below. And with that said thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value please leave a like and subscribe to this channel and that way I will see you in the next video. Take care everyone.